Shalom. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rukakadash. Double honor to the Apostle and Hell is a great millstone who rule well. And the sincere salutation to all the Akhi pushing this truth throughout the four winds of the earth, with love and hope for the elect. Lord's willingness be edifying. Coming at you with another lesson. They take crafty counsel against us. They have taken crafty counsel against us, against the children of Israel, okay, against the Hebrew Israelites, the so-called Negroes, the so-called Hispanics, the so-called Native Americans. They have taken crafty counsel against our people, and they have destroyed our people through generations and generations. They have destroyed us. We are yet this day in the land of our captivity. Thus saith the scriptures. So first chapter is Psalms 83. I'm going to start at verse 2. And it reads. Psalm 83 verse 2. It reads, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Matter of fact, Salakia, verse 2, that was verse 3. Psalm 83, verse 2, it says, For lo, thine enemies, and we know who our enemies are according to Deuteronomy. Okay, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 48. It says that our enemies shall put a yoke of iron on our neck, and we shall go to our enemy for the want of all things. Okay. And where do we go to get our food, our clothes, our transportation? Where do we have to go? To the so-called white man, okay? To the Edomites, okay? The descendants of Esau. So we have to go to them for the one of all things. It's a nakedness and in hunger. Excuse me, that's Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. We should go to our enemies for the one of all things. In nakedness and in hunger. So we know who our enemies are. It is the so-called white race. And Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, it say, Ye shall go into Egypt again, which Egypt means abundance. It say, You shall go into Egypt again by ships, and there you shall be sold to your enemies. It say to your enemies. And we know how we got over here on slave ships. Okay? The transatlantic slave trade. It said, you shall go into Egypt again by ships, and you shall be sold to your enemies, your enemies, for bond men and bond women. Okay? For bond men and bond women. Okay? So we know who our enemies are. Now, this is Psalm chapter 83, verse 2. It said, for lo, thy enemies make a tumult, meaning a great noise, a commotion. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. That's why David said in Psalm 139 and 20, 21, he said that he hate them that hate thee. He said, oh, Lord, I hate them that hate thee. Okay. I count them my enemies. So right here it say they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Okay, and I always bring this out about the movie Roots, man. When they beat Kunta Kente, beat that Hebrew name out of him, man. Okay, they did us like they were a plantation, man. They took our heritage and our inheritance from us, made us forget who we were, man. So... Reading this again, say they have come and they have said, Come, let us cut them off for being a nation, the nation of Israel, the twelve tribes, the Hebrew Israelites, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent, and they are confederate against thee. Okay, may they then join together as one man. Verse 6 it says, The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites. And the Moabites, okay, we know Edom is the so-called white people. It's saying the Ishmaelites, which is the Arabs. It's say 
of Ammon, which is the Moabites, and the Hagarines. It say Gabal and Ammonite and Ammon. It say, okay, it say Gabal and Ammon. Moab, Moab is the Chinese and Ammon is the Japanese. It say an Amalekite, an Amalek, which is the so-called Jews who are over there in our land, okay, the Khazarian Empire, the so-called Jews, the ones that run the earth. It say the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, okay, the Philistines of Tyre, them are some, them the Africans, man, okay, them are Africans, real Africans, the ones who took us and sold us to the Edomites, okay. It say Ashur also have joined with them. They have hopping the children a lot. Hopping word go back to strengthen. Okay. They have strengthened the children a lot. Now, this is Psalm 83, verse 12. It says, Who said, Let us take to ourselves the house of God in possession, meaning the house of Israel. Okay, the house of God, the sons of God, the twelve tribes of Israel. Israel is Yasha Allah in the Hebrew. Yasha Allah. Okay. They have said, this is verse 12 in Psalm 83. It says, Who said, Let us take to ourselves the house of God in possession? Okay? In possession, man. It say, Oh my power, make them like a wheel as the stubble before the wind. Now, was it that word? What else does that word stubble is mentioned in these scriptures, man? Okay? It is mentioned in Obadiah, man, the 18th chapter, when it say, Esau shall be as for stubble, man. And we shall kindle in them. So right here it say, this is Psalm 83 verse 13. Oh my power, make them like a wheel as the stubble before the wind. Verse 14, it reads, as fire burneth a wood and as the flame set up the mountains on fire. So prosecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame. They that make they, that they may seek thy name, O Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah. But they can't, man, because they the heathens, man. And they have taken crafty counsel against the Lord's people, man. Verse 17 say, Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yeah, let them be put to shame and perish, and they will. Thus said the scriptures, Obadiah, verse 18, man. Okay? Like it say right here, man, as stubble before the wind, as the fire burneth a wood, and as the flame set up the mountain on fire. Hey, so they're showing you, man, that they're going to be put to death by fire, man. Okay, they're going to be destroyed. He already gathering now over there in the valley of Jehoshaphat, man. Okay, the valley of decision, man, Yahweh Shapat, man. So they're going to destroy their own selves. The Lord is going to put the spirit on them to fight against each other, man. And it's going on now. So, going to, um, this is Psalms chapter 79, I'm going to read verse 1. It says, O God, the heathen are coming to thy inheritance. The holy temple have they defiled. Okay? Talking about his chosen people, man. Okay? Israel. It say they have laid Jerusalem on heaps, man. And they did that during 7 AD, man. Okay? They destroyed us, man. Our kingdom, man. Our people. So this is um, verse 2. It said, The dead bodies of thy servants have they given to be meat unto the fowls of the heaven, which is the birds, the flesh of the saints, unto the beasts of the earth. Okay? And they're talking about all different animals down here, man. Okay? Their blood have they shed like water run about Jerusalem, and there was none to bury them, okay? They were just laying everywhere, man, like dung upon the ground, man. Dead bodies everywhere, man. Okay, when they slaughtered Gad and Reuben, man, the Native American Indians, man, when they came over here, man, they slaughtered them, man. They was dead bodies everywhere, man, okay? And they was not buried, man. So this is on Psalm 79, verse 7. It says, for they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place, man, which was Jerusalem, man. Okay. They have destroyed our people, man. And now our people have Stockholm Syndrome where they love their oppressors, man. They love the ones that had them in possession, man. 
okay? The yokes of iron ain't on our neck no more, but the, it's still on our people's mind, man. We are still mentally enslaved, man. So, this is Psalm chapter 73, verse 8. It say, they are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily, okay? These some proud ass demons, man. Proud devils, man. Wicked demons, man. Okay. They say they are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression, man. Okay. They are corrupt, man. Who is this man? Son 83, man. The tabernacles of Edom, the Ishmaelites, the Moabites, the Ammonites, Amalek, Philistine, and Tyree, man. Okay. They are corrupt, man, and speak wickedly concerning oppression. Because they put us in captivity, man. All 12 tribes of Israel, man. I'm talking from generation to generation, man. Over thousands of years in captivity, man. Back and forth to every one of these people, man. 18 nations on the earth. Israel being one. The 12 tribes of Israel being one nation. 17 nations. All of them have had us in captivity, man. Okay? They are corrupt and... and Speak wickedly concerning oppression, man. Our peoples are just oppressed on top of oppression, man. And then you got these two-third jakes out here, man, that got Stockholm Syndrome. When they love their oppressor, man, they're ready to fight you, man. They're ready to fight you for these Edomites, man. Um, oh, verse 12, it says, Behold. This is Psalm 73, verse 12. Say, Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Who is this talking about, man? You know who this is talking about, man. The elites, the one percenters, man. Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, okay? The Alpenheimers, the DuPonts, the Gettys, okay? The JP Morgans, and all these ones that own banks, man. Okay, the one percenters, man, the Federal Reserve Bank owners, man. Okay, they're the same verse that tell you in Deuteronomy 28 and 48 that we have to go to them for the one of all things, man. Who do we go to for the one of all things? The one percenters who run this whole earth, man, who controls everything. Okay, transportation, the media, clothes, food, everything, man. This is the ones that are corrupt and say, behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. And how do they get their main riches, man? By selling Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Zebulon, um, all the other 12 tribes, man. Simeon, Reuben, Gad, okay? In captivity, man. All 12 tribes of Israel, man. Issachar, okay? Putting us in captivity, man. Selling us, man. That's how they get their zillions and billions and trillions, man. Okay? It's say they prosper, man. Who prosper in the world, they increase in riches, man. Okay? So this is Psalm chapter 50 and verse 18. It say, um, it reads, When thou saw us a thief, then that consented with him. And that's what Esau did, man. Okay? They helped the, they helped the Babylonians take us down, man. Okay? That's how they wicked, man. Verse 19. Salakia. Psalm chapter 50, verse 18. When thou saw us a thief, then that consented with him. And has been partakers with adulterers. He's talking about all those nations that I read to you in Psalm 83. And it reads, verse 19. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frame of deceit. And that's what they do, man. Okay? The devils, man. Diablos. Deceivers, man. So they frame deceit because they are deceivers, man. This is what they do. Verse 20. It say, Thy cities and speakest against thy brother. Okay? This is talking about Esau and Jacob, man. It say, this is Psalm chapter 50, verse 20. Thy cities and speakest against thy brother. Thy slanderous, thy own mother's son. Okay, that's talking about Esau. How he doing Jacob, man? Okay, how he doing the Israelites, man? 
read this again, man. You know this talking about Esau, man. This is Psalm chapter 50, verse 20. Thy citizen speaketh against thy brother, thy slanderest thy own mother's son. Hey, that's wicked, man. Okay? But that was all according to prophecy, man. Now, this is um Psalm chapter 37, and I'm going to read verse 20. It reads, But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem and Shai, shall be at the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke. They shall consume away. Okay? Like I just read to you in Psalm 83, man. They tell you that they are going to, to consume away, man. They shall be as stubble, man. Okay? They shall be a fire, man. A big bonfire. They shall consume away. As Psalm 37 and 20 reads. And this is Psalm 37, verse 12. It reads, The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. And that's what they did, man. And they are continually destroying our people, man. Verse 18, it say, it's like in verse 14, it say, The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy, and to slay such as be of upright conversation. But that's what we do, man. We always teaching these teaching this truth, man, these scriptures, man. Upright conversation, man. Everything is being done in righteousness, man. The Lord has raised up his elect men to push this truth and all holy conversation, man. Okay, and all righteousness. Okay, this is verse 15. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. Okay, so the Lord is going to call them to destroy themselves with their own devices, man. Matter of fact, I got a precept. I'm going to get that. This is Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5 and verse, and verse 12. It say, He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands could not perform their enterprise. He take up the wise in their own craftiness and it mentions that in um First Corinthians chapter one about how he gave the wisdom of this world to be foolish, man. Okay. So it said he take the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the forward is carried headlong. So the Lord is going to destroy them, man, with their own devices, man. Going back right here, this is Psalm 37. Verse 15, it says, Their swords shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. Okay? Meaning they enterprise, man. It ain't going to work, man. Okay? This new world order they're trying to set up, man, it ain't going to work, man. Because soon as they holler about peace, as they tell you in First Thessalonians 5 and 3, man, when they, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them, man. Okay? And I also tell you that too in, in Ezekiel chapter 7, man, verse 25. So um, this is um, Psalm 37 and verse 2. And it reads, For they shall soon be cut off like the grass and wither as the green herb. Hey, they're going to be soon destroyed, man. Okay? And they shall not be found no more. No more in the earth, man. The Lord is going to do away with Esau, Edom, man. They shall consume away. They shall consume into smoke, man. Okay? Psalm 37 and 20. Okay, this is Psalm 34 and verse 9. And it reads, O fill the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai, ye his saints. For there is no want to them that fear him. Amen. So the Lord is going to protect you, man, in that day. So ain't no worries, man. Okay? Ain't no worries, man. And this is Psalm uh, 91, verse 1. It says, He that dwelleth in secret places of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. 
So showing you, man, O oh, ye that fear the Lord, man. Okay, as I just read to you in Psalm 34, man. Okay, Psalm 34 and 9. Hey, the Lord is going to protect his men. Verse 2 say, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my power, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler, man. Okay? His truth shall be thy shield and buckler, man. Now, precept to that is Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to start at. We want to start at verse. Verse 10. It says, it's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, and in the power of his might, as I just read to you in Psalm 91. It says, put on the whole arm of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Devil just means deceiver. So we know deceiver. who been deceiving our people, man? Since they've been in the rulership, the so-called white man, man. Okay, the red man, Esau, Edom. Okay, Aishashua, wasted away as he. Okay, Caucasian, a cave dweller, what they is. They say, verse 12, for we wrestle against, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of this dark, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. They say the rulers who run this world, man. This is a code, man. Okay, who ruled this world, man? Esau, Edom, man, the one percent of the Edomites, starting with the Rothschilds. Okay, it say, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Who sits in the high places, man? Esau, Edom, man, the elites, okay, starting with the mother that founded them, man, Great Britain, man, okay. Verse 13 said, Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, standing therefore having your lawns girt about with truth, and having on the, breast, the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet Shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery dust of the wicked. Amen. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter two and eleven say we are not ignorant of Satan's devices, man. Okay. We are not ignorant of Satan's devices. So it say. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Which is the word of power. Okay. Now. Got a precept for that man. They say take this sword. Which is the which is the spirit. Which is the word of power man. This is um, Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 12. And it reads. For the word of God is quick and powerful. And sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing even to the divine asunder. To the soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. So when they tell you in Ephesians, man, to put on this whole armor, man, and take what? Read this again. Okay, it's, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word, man. Okay, Hebrews 4 and 12. This word, man, is sharper than any two-edged sword, man. Okay. Hey, it's beautiful, this truth, man. But hey, they have taken crap to counsel against our people, man, since they've been in the rulership. Okay? Since they've been in the power, man, they have taken crap to counsel against our people. But the Lord is raising up his men. His elect men is being risen, man. Okay? The elect of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah has risen, man. Okay, matter of fact, I gotta get this man. This is first Thessalonians. First Thessalonians 
chapter 5 and verse 3. And it reads, not verse 3, so like it. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse it's a verse 5, chapter 2 Thessalonians, I mean, 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 5. It say, Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Okay? So, hey, man, we watching, man. We watching, man. We on post because we know what they did. Okay, they took crafty counsel against us, man, and destroyed the nation of Israel. But the Lord is raising his elect men back up, man. So we are woke, standing firm on the tower, man, watching, keep watch, man. Okay, and preaching this word, man, waking up the elect. So with that, man, Lord willing, someone was edified. I want to say I'll pray to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakah Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well. And since just salutation to all the options, pushing his truth throughout the four ends of the earth, waking up the hopefully let in all faith and sincerity, man. Shalom.